Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Please welcome Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. For 40 years, have defied labels, redefining the genre of magic, and inventing their own place in comedy. Hey guys. The greatest on the planet. We are the longest running show in Vegas history. Folks, it's all part of the act. We're more successful than we deserve, and we're thrilled about that. Penn and Teller are a lot more than comedians or magicians. They're philosophers. Magicians would say he's given away the tricks. The bad boys of magic, they were exposing magic. They make me angry. We've been thrown out of uh, the magic circle and the magic castle for giving away magic secrets. It's very unprofessional, I think, spoiling it for your fellow magicians, and as well as the fact you spoiled the whole thing for me. It's 1975. Jaws is the highest grossing film of all time. Very frightening. Very tasty. This thing is the future. Sony Betamax and the United States are leaving Vietnam. And it's here that our two heroes first meet. We are both uh, helicopter pilots in Nam. We were there. both in Nam together, I was a pilot. All right, that's not true. Boy, if that were true, that'd be better, wouldn't it? <laughs> the origin stories have been uh, re retold so many times, I don't think there's really any truth left in them. The real story is a little less exciting. I bought a stereo when I was in high school from a guy that Teller went to college with. Truth can often be less interesting than fantasy, hence why it's generally a bad idea to reveal magic tricks. But sometimes, it's better. Teller was the one who told me you could tell bigger truths and you could be honest about your lying. See, some of Penn and Teller's most popular tricks are those where the method is exposed. The most famous example being their version of the cups and balls. We take the ball, we place it in our hand, we vanish it, and it appears underneath the cup. Now, the cups and balls is a classic trick that's been performed by countless number of magicians throughout the years. And there's different versions. Some use one cup, some use three cups, but the idea is always the same. One by one, the balls end up underneath the cup. Now, what Penn and Teller did was different. See, they did a version where they exposed the method. What Penn and Teller did took big balls. And when I say big balls, I mean big balls. See, they did the cups and balls with clear plastic cups. Penn and Teller realized that this trick could still be beautiful. We take the first ball, pretend to place it in our hand, having already snuck it underneath the first cup. Even when you know the method. We have three duplicates. Set a cup of these two balls over here. This is not juggling. This is called misdirection. For I looking over here, Teller sinks the final ball under. One more on either side. And of course, for the finish, it's an American wow. baseball. But not every magician was happy with this kind of exposure. So we had one magician who got very, very angry at us uh, when we were giving away the cups and balls with the clear plastic mm -hmm. cups. They should be crucified by the magic circle. And said, whose side are you on anyway? They're mad. And we said, well, <laughs> the audience's side. I think it's all wrong. Magicians were getting really bent out of shape without ever seeing what they did. They just heard the hype. The bad boys of magic. The bad boys of magic. Magicians would say he's given away the tricks. See, these guys are saying it isn't really a secret. It's just skill. Well, stuff you, mate. I'm sorry. Don't dis don't spoil it for your. It's very unprofessional, I think, spoiling it for your fellow magicians, and as well as the fact you spoiled the whole thing for me. We've been thrown out of uh, the magic circle and the magic castle for giving away magic secrets. But it wasn't that black and white. They just heard the hype. The bad boys of magic. They were exposing magic. In fact, they invented their own tricks to expose, and most of them are kind of fun to watch. When we come out and show you something that has a really clever trick behind it, then you uh, tend to think that all of our tricks are that clever and beautiful. They only ever expose something if the, if the actual secret is more interesting than the original sort of trick itself. The way you keep a trick secret is by having the method be really ugly. The tricks we give away, we give away really beautiful, choreographed, clever answers, and then the tricks we really want to fool you with are gaffer's tape and a lie. It's a weird feeling finding out the secret to a magic trick. That feeling of the mystique being slightly tampered with. It's almost like you feel guilt for seeing something you shouldn't have. I'm giving you audience. Ironically, the same feeling you get when you hear Teller speak for the first time. Teller, you're holding a microphone. Will you speak today? Because Teller, before he even met Penn, was already performing his act silently. When I first met Teller, he was already an accomplished magician, and uh, he was already not speaking. And who can blame him? Most magician patter is just insecure, mumbo-jumbo, redundant nonsense. This is a red ball. This is a normal pack of cards. And I've, I've got, got no friends. friends. There's something absolutely incredible that happens when you don't talk. It becomes intimate. 
it, I mean, it becomes really powerfully intimate. And he found out that if he shut up, they simply grew tired of heckling him. You feel like an idiot if you're heckling a silent guy. I became interested in the idea of lying without speaking. Suddenly, you've got a whole new way of performing magic. See, Teller and I are a couple of sensationalist circus schlock hacks. And so was Bond, a unique double act. The entertaining and annoying Penn and Teller, ladies and gentlemen. With an even more unique relationship. I don't believe it's worth having a, a creative partner if the creative partner agrees with you. It was very, very um, sterile, very, uh, very uh, cold. Teller and I never started with any affection towards each other whatsoever. <laughs> if you're very good friends with somebody, you may be afraid to fight with them. We kind of assume we're not going to get along. We're business partners. When Teller and I don't like each other, when we're not getting along, it doesn't change much of anything. We don't socialize much because what we care about is the show. Over all these years, I mean, he's certainly my closest friend. Yeah. It would be foolish to not say Teller's my best friend. So he's become my best friend, but in, in, a, in a very circuitous route. A relationship built on respect. It's time and it's respect. Rather than love. Our very partnership is built on ideas. And clearly, it's worked. Being a Teller who I got to tell you, man, this is like a big moment for me. Appearances on talk shows. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller, everybody. The key to their success is that they do something nobody else does. Sold out Vegas shows. You can see them at the Rio Hotel. You guys are the longest running headlining act in Las Vegas. In history. In that way, we're competing with Sinatra and Elvis and winning. I have always thought that the people who do the most interesting work in an art form don't quite belong there. They were on the way to being the most influential magicians of all time. The greatest on the planet. <laughs> Folks, it's all part of the act. But is that what they wanted? I mean, I started out as a juggler. See, Penn wasn't exactly a fan of magic. Well, I, I never uh, liked magic and still don't. <laughs> I did not like the idea of lying. Uh, as an entertainment. Magic in their eyes. Uh, I was repulsed by it. Was not in a good place. I don't know about magic. I gotta tell you, magic, I'm one of the people, I watch a magician, I always try and figure out the trick, you know, and I can never do it. They always make me feel stupid. Uh, when we started out, it was really just, uh, you know, a greasy guy that talks with a lot of birds torturing women in front of Mylar to bad rip off Motown music. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. That's the whole point of magic, you realize. He comes on, fools you, you feel stupid, show's over. <laughs> That's magic, and that's the way they work, Tip one. Here's a quarter, now it's gone, you're a jerk. And Teller was the one who told me you could tell bigger truths, and you could be honest about your lying. And maybe we could do magic without um, insulting the audience. For nearly 50 years, Penn and Teller have continued to push the boundaries of magic. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are, the entertaining and annoying Penn and Teller. Challenging the audience to think differently about magic about theatre, about politics, science, religion, guns, freedom of speech. These guys aren't afraid of taking risks. Take this genre-breaking act on the Saturday Night Live show in 1986, for example. And when I say live, we're talking 8 million people watching at home live. See that lady right there? She's in Teller's hand, and then she's gone. We'll go one step further, Mr. Copperfield. They performed a full six-minute magic act filmed entirely whilst they were hanging upside down. We've been working on it for um, six weeks, all the time in rehearsal, and there was an incredibly hard moment. We couldn't do really any of the tricks. The muffin pro was hitting half the time, and uh, in all the rehearsals, I never did it once right. But you know, these guys being who they are, nah, no bother, we'll crack on. And we went out there and just just mostly were winging it and just got incredibly lucky. And then on Saturday Night Live with all the cameras rolling in front of eight million people was the only time I nailed it. Maybe this isn't about the genius of Penn and Teller. Maybe this is about the balls of Penn and Teller, the sheer gonads. Gonads the size of South American cities. <laughs> or maybe it's a bit of both.